Welcome to our presentation of the Olesko Sure Strike 3650 Line Striker. What you'll see today is also relevant for our Sure Strike models 4050, 4550, and 6050. So we're going to start by unpacking the Line Striker and setting it up as you would if you just received it out of the box. Right, so first off, what you want to do is to loosen. There's two bolts, nuts on the back. You loosen those, you bring the handles back to where you want to use them. You set your height and you tighten the two nuts. Make sure they're tight. That way, if they're too, when they're If they're too loose, they won't hold the strike, the strike the tire. If you want to lift up the front wheel. Okay. Like that. Right, next, we're going to cut some of the cable ties. I use Clippers so you don't damage any hoses and stuff while I'm working. Just cut through. You can loosen the front. Bring the gun around. Loosen the gun holder. In position. The gun so it's facing the ground. Another cable tie here. The gun holder is adjustable so you can move the gun up and down. Then, release the cable holding the bucket lid. And inside your box here, Your instruction manual, your throat seal oil, turn buckle and tips. Right. Now, I'll refer to the other accessories later. The throat seal oil we put into the top of the packing up here. And this warning label refers to adding the throat seal oil and on the reverse side explains how to put it in and also it talks about adjusting the packing nut which is right here. Now, when they first use this, they put a cap on top of there, so we have to make a hole in there. And you only want to put a small amount in. You don't fill, you don't fill the packing nut. The oil is there to stop paint from sticking to the piston if the packing should leak, and uh, also to stop paint from drying. So, it lubricates the packing as well as uh, stopping paint from drying. There's a little cover to go back on there. And this just snaps back in place. Like so. Now before you start, 
It's very important that you read all the safety warnings for the hose and to make sure you read this. All right. Okay. This is the Shore Stripe 3650. It's a one gun line striper, it's 0.7 GPM, 3000 PSI maximum pressure. It has a 120 cc Honda engine. The Honda engine has oil alert, so if the oil level is low, it won't run, so it saves the engine. Uh, the machine the striper comes with two spray tips. You've got a 317 striping tip and a 517 spray tip. So not only can you stripe, parking lots, you can stripe sports fields, you can also paint buildings, so any exterior painting, you can use this machine for that job too. Now the people who will buy this are your first time striping contractor, somebody doing seal coating, uh, people like property maintenance people, apartment owners, shopping center owners, ideal for schools and universities, basically anybody who's doing a smaller parking lot striping. Okay, now we're checking the tire pressure just to make sure we've got the same pressure on both sides. So, we've got 20, 20 psi there. If you've got higher pressure on one side, you're going to have the machine going around in circles. So, a little high there. Now I've got 20 psi here, so I'm good. First thing we do is we check the uh, oil level. You can actually see the oil level on the threads, but you also see it on the dipstick. Without oil, or if the oil level is too low, the engine's not going to start. Put the dipstick back in. Next we're going to add gas. I'm also going to cut the cable ties that hold the hose. And this one on the front, which is holding the, the, um, the cable that operates the gun. I'm doing this so that I can now move the gun assembly from side to side. And I'm going to show you that once we get the machine running. So now, we're ready, set to go, we'll take the machine out and we'll start to do some striping. Before I put the tip on the gun, I'm going to show you where the seal is. So if I take the tip guard off, inside the tip guard is a seal. I push it out using the tip, this is your seal. Now it's important the seal goes in with the curve, you see the curve there, lines up with the hole in the top. So. I just look inside, line it up, and push the seal in place. Now the, the tip will slide straight in. I put that on the gun. Now you notice the point on the tip is pointing down. If I turn the tip this way, it's reversing the tip. If there's a tip plug, it will blow the, the plug out. So I'm going to start with it in that direction. Right. Next, we're going to start the machine. So, first thing you do is you make sure that the prime valve is open. The pressure is all the way turned to zero. Switch the engine on, set the choke, 
Make sure the fuel is on. Start the engine. We're going to now change from our water to paint. So I've just got a gallon of paint inside a five gallon bucket, but you can use either a one gallon, which we're going to do for a small demo, or you can use five gallons of paint. So turn it on, start the engine, turn up the pressure, we're going to 
lift the suction tube out of the bubble. You see the return tube is empty. I'll put the suction tube into the paint. see in here, they first spotted the back and, and the first couple of lines they made here was there was still some water in the line, so you had water mixed with the paint. Now after I made a couple of lines, the water's disappeared, now I've got straight paint and the line's getting cleaner. Now the line is slowly getting wider as I raise up the gun, so I'm just ready, I've just adjusted again, I'm going to make another line. So, spray and this is why I like to spray on some rosin paper first because you've got a nice surface to get it right before we start striping on the concrete.
Okay, what we're going to show you now is moving the gun holder from the right hand side to the left hand side. So first off, I'm going to release some of the hose from the back, unclip it, I'll unlock the gun holder on this side, pull the gun out. Now I'm going to move the gun lock to the other side. Now when you're doing this, be careful that the hose doesn't touch the exhaust. We'll put the lock onto the other side. The gun holder in. Now, if when you if you're on the same job, you can put a mark on this bar so that when you've got it on this side, you've got you mark it. When you put it on this side, you just set it to the mark, and the gun holder is going to be in the correct position. I think we're, we're about right where we are there, so we're fine. We uh, lock the hose in to make sure it's not touching the exhaust, and now we can go and stripe the line on this side of the machine. Okay, right now, because I've moved the gun to the other side of the machine, it allows us to stripe a line on the other side of this face. Obviously, I couldn't run the gun the normal side because the damage to the, the middle of the parking lot, the post would be in the way, so I wouldn't be able to make the line. So by quickly moving the gun from side to side, I can now finish the job. A 317 striping tip and a 517 spray tip on the machine. I'm going to spray with that one in a few minutes. You also get a swivel head. Now this is used for curves. You attach the, the swivel to the gun, you put the, the, the guard and the tip on the end and it allows you to spray the side of a curve or you can move the gun up and spray down on the top. Uh, there are different sizes. This is a 317. We have a 217. A 217 will give you a narrow line. So if you've got a very rough surface, it will, it will give you a cleaner line. If you're getting too much paint on the line, you can go down to a, three, a 315 or a 215. So the yellow tips are a smaller size, less material. You can also, for doing curbs, use an extension. The extension can be attached to the front of the gun. You can put your tip in it and use it for painting curbs or even stand up painting stencils. If you're using paint that's not fresh, we also have bag strainers. You start with an empty bucket, put your suction tube into the bucket, put in the strainer bag and pour the paint into the strainer so it's filtered before it comes out to the machine. So these are all things that will make life a little bit easier. Okay, now I'm gonna take the gun off and show you how to spray. I'm now gonna change from the striping tip to the spray tip. Loosen the guard, 
break tip. Now, when you take the tip out, it's good to have a, bucket, a little cup of water to keep it clean or keep it wet. Now, the spray tip, use it. Okay, first set the pressure. Okay, we're now going to go through the cleanup procedure. So, first thing we're going to do, our prime valve is open, pressure's turned down, start the machine. We'll lift the suction tube out of the paint. Just cycle slowly to the edge most of the paint. We'll just put a small amount of water in the bucket. Put it into the material, into a, uh, this 
small amount of water and we're going to use the water in the bucket to be pumped through and to uh, clean the hose out in our little cup. Once you've lost all the pressure, take the tip off. When the guns, when you've got clean water coming out the gun, trigger to make sure. We're now going to take the gun filter out. The filter is in the handle. Okay, unscrew the handle. The first time you use it, you may need to use a wrench to unloosen it because the, you, use, you use a wrench to tighten it the first time. But after that, hand tight is sufficient. Inside is the filter. As you can see, that paint was really good. We didn't have much in the way of material trapped on the filter so everything's pretty clean. Just give it a good wash off. Make sure it's clean. Make sure your gun's clean. Put everything back together again. Okay, stop. 90% of all problems with an airless paint sprayer are caused by lack of cleaning. So what I'm going to show you is how to disassemble the lower ball and seat and how to free the ball in the piston. Now this will happen if you, one, if you don't clean the machine and paint is left to dry inside, or if the machine has been flushed out but the water or storage solution was not left in. So the pump become dry and the ball stuck to the seat. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to use the tool that comes with the machine and you can use it to loosen and then remove the suction assembly. Okay. This is the suction assembly. Right. Below the suction assembly is your suction seat. Inside is the ball and cage. So first off, the ball must be free to move on the seat, and the seat and ball must be clean. Then inside the piston, inside you can see the piston. There's another ball and seat, and it's just important to push against the ball. You'll hear it pop. Once you've done that, the ball is now free to move. You can hear it rattle. Now you won't hear that if it's on the machine because you can't shake it. But when you push against it, you'll hear a little pop as the ball releases from the seat. Once you've done that, you can put the cage back in, the ball and the seat, and the suction assembly. You can start up the machine, prime it, and then you're ready to go back to work. Make sure that once you've put the suction assembly back on, Use the tool to make sure it's tight. At the top of the pump is the pack and adjustment nut. 
Now, every three or four months, you should check to make sure that the packing is tight. So what you do is you loosen it till it's free to move, like that. It just starts to feel resistance. From that point, you go one, two, three, four. Four holes is three quarters of a turn. Now the packings are correctly tightened. At any time you want to adjust the packings, you always release the packing nut until the packings are loose. So just feel that you're putting some tension on the springs. Once you're at that point, it's then four, four to one, two, three, four. The packings are adjusted. Thank you for watching our short video for Short Stripe 3650 Line Striper. I hope you learned something today. We've made Line Striper a little bit more fun. Now I would like you to make sure you read and understand all the instructions and the warnings in the instruction manual and cleaning and use the storage solution is very important. A clean machine is going to work next time. Now when you store the machine over winter it's good to use a 50-50 mix of oil and paint thinner. You just need the thin oil in the machine, it stops anything from sticking and it won't freeze. Thanks again for watching our video. See you again. Bye. Service on an LP series pump is actually quite simple and using a packing kit it's quite easy to re rebuild the pump. Now to do it, what you need to do is loosen the bottom packing nut, oh sorry, the uh, suction seat and loosen the packing nut. Now to take the pump off the machine, the easiest way is to first remove the suction assembly. Now this operation is the same whether it's a low boy as we have here or a high boy which has a seat like this. This is the seat for the low boy and for the carry. Both of them use the same ball and seat So the internal parts are the same. Right, now to take the pump off of the machine, you first have to remove the spring clip, slide the collar down, and push out the pin that's holding the piston in place. Once you've done that, you can remove the two spacers which are holding the pump to the gearbox and now the pump unit will slide away. Now the packing kit's got everything you need inside. You first remove the packing adjustment and push the piston out of the pump. Now this may be a little tight. Once you've moved, start to move the piston, you can push the piston out of the pump Now, what you have left inside is the packings. Now, the packing kit comes with directions on how to service it, but all the packings, everything, are supplied on this plastic piston. Now, you can take the piston out of there, as I have here, and use this to remove the packings that are inside the pump. Push down and everything is removed. Now again, yours may be a little tighter because you'll have paint in there. Put the piston back into the new set. Now, a good idea before you reassemble is to soak the leather packings in a lightweight oil. That will give them um, a little bit of lubrication to, to uh, slide back into the pump and, uh, and also it allows them to expand easier 
once the pump is assembled. Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to put grease on the outside of the packings and slide the packing back in. So I'm going to use the set I have here, which is... Now you'll notice the packings are the same both directions. So I can actually assemble that either direction. It doesn't make any difference. I then put on my spacer. You then have Belleville springs. These are curved washers. The first one, the curve goes down. The second one, the curve goes up. The third one, the curve goes down. Now, you'll put your upper packing, these packings here, will slide inside this collar. That slides on. Now, in the kit, you get the two O-rings that fit here. The Teflon one, you slide on from the bottom. Uh, it's going to be tight, so you'll stretch it a little bit, push it on. Once it's in place, squeeze it around to make sure it's nice and tight. The rubber, the um, Viton O-ring, slots into place. Now, before you assemble back into the pump, put a coat in the grease on all these surfaces to make sure, and another good area is to put some grease on the inside of the threads. Slide the piston down inside and push it past the threads. Once it's down inside, you can just put the packing up on just a little bit to hold it in place. Push your packing holder out and the piston is ready to go back inside. Now, this piston is brand new, it has a very smooth surface. A warm piston is going to show a ridge that you can feel with your thumbnail on the bottom or on the top of the, of the piston. Once you feel a ridge there, you really should replace the piston. Usually, a piston will last the life of two sets of packings. So if you're repacking for the second time, you should be replacing the piston. The piston comes with the ball and seat already installed. Now you do receive another ball and O-ring in the packing kit, but it can be quite difficult to get the old uh, ball and seat out. So truthfully, I wouldn't worry about that ball and seat. Um, I would just, uh, if there's not too much wear on the piston, you're just replacing the packings, just slide that piston back in. But again, if you feel a deep, uh, you can really feel an edge with your thumb now, and if you see some deep scratching, it's time to replace the piston. All right, the piston goes back inside, push that all the way in. All right, taking that's ready. Okay, so then um, the next thing is the pack and adjustment. Now the pack and adjustment, you tighten this down until you feel resistance. Once you feel resistance, it's, a, it's going to be four holes. One, two, three, four. That's, that's adjusted correctly for the machine. Now, you'll assemble it back onto the pump in a reverse order. You'll make sure when the, um, to, to take the piston off the first time, you want to run the pump very slowly until you see the collar completely appear from the bottom of the gearbox. Once it's outside, stop the, turn the motor off, and that gives you room to then slide everything off. Now when you're putting this back together again, you've got to be careful that you don't lose these parts down inside. So it's a good idea to put something on, on there just to stop it from, from dropping down, or you want the... Uh, the spring on first, then the collar and the pin. So you slide the piston up inside the, into the gearbox, you put the pin in place, you slide the collar up to hold it, and then lastly the spring, you snap that into the groove which is just below the, the nut, the cap.
So once we're back on the pump, we put our spacers on, one each side, bolt that on, and you tighten them up equally both sides until they're up to the to the top, and then you just make them tight. If you tighten one side first, you'll cock the pump. So make sure that they're both going up equally. All right. Now that we have the pump assembled back onto the machine, uh, we'll run it under pressure. So we prime the pump first. We run it for about five minutes under pressure. Make sure it goes up to full pressure. Release the pressure from the pump. Loosen the packing nut and retighten it. So again, you go from being loose to just touching and then four holes. One, two, three, four. And that is the correct tension on the back of the uh, With the pump back together again, you're all set to go. And uh, lastly, put in some throat seal oil and put on the cap, the, the uh, cover, to stop people putting their fingers inside the pump.